Welcome to the Private Practice Startup Podcast, where we help mental health professionals grow their dream practices and live a life they love. We chat with successful private practitioners, business coaches, and marketing experts, bringing you tons of practice building tips. We invite you to take advantage of our private practice paperwork and our signature marketing e-course. And we have a gift for you. This is the exact methodology we use to create our six-figure private pay practices and have helped many other therapists do the same. Go to privatepracticestartup.com and on the home page, click the button to download a free copy of your dream private practice playbook. Now on to today's episode. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Private Practice Startup Podcast. So usually this podcast is always focused on building a practice and a business and clinical things that come up and everyday things and being a therapist in private practice. But today we're going to talk about how to close your private practice. And Kate and I are just going to have a conversation with you about this. I'll share a little bit about my story. And, and, you know, you might be in a place that you are looking looking to transition either out of private practice or your life has taken a a different route and um, you need to close your practice. So we're going to talk about the steps to do that. But before we dive into that, we hope that you joined us last week for a very exciting panel podcast on how to get off insurance panels. And um, our guests were Tara Arkejos, Um, who is one of our coaching alumni, Tammy Berman, another coaching alumni and friend and colleague locally, and Kim Tolson, who actually teaches therapists how to get on insurance panels. So she had great information and perspective. If this is one of your goals this year, or whenever you're listening to the podcast, you definitely don't want to miss this. We talked, you know, about the nitty gritty about it, but we also talked about the mindset shifts and other things that occur um, and things that you have to overcome mentally, emotionally to be able to move from insurance panels to a hybrid or um, a full fee private practice. So before we dive in um, today, let's just take a quick moment for our sponsor. Are you tired of running to the lobby to see if your next appointment has arrived? Would you like a more discreet, stress-free way for your clients to check in? Take a deep breath. The receptionist for iPad empowers your practice to create a zen-like check-in experience. This episode is sponsored by The Receptionist for iPad. It's the highest rated digital check-in software for therapy offices and behavioral health clinics used by thousands of private practitioners across the country, including many who are just getting started. The Receptionist for iPad is a simple, inexpensive way to allow your clients to discreetly check in, to notify providers of a client's arrival, and to ensure your front lobby area is stress-free. The software sends an immediate notification to the therapist when a client checks in and can even ask if any client information has changed since their last visit. Start your 14-day free trial of The Receptionist for iPad by going to thereceptionist.com slash PPS, as in private practice startup. And when you do, you'll also get your first month for free when you sign up. That's thereceptionist.com slash PPS. So, Kate, what's happening? (laughs) What's up, Startup Nation? Good to be here. And it is interesting because we usually talk about how to grow and expand and scale your private practice. So we're talking all about that. But it's important to also look at the flip side so that if you are transitioning in your life in one way or another, maybe you're hitting a different phase um, after having kids and deciding that you no longer want to do what you were doing before, or maybe you're moving across the country and need to close down your physical practice location and reopen um, in another location, or maybe you've just decided that your passions are headed in a different direction and they're evolving throughout the stages of life that you go through and you really want to close down your private practice. We're going to talk about that today. Or even if you're transitioning from a solo practice into a group practice, and maybe you're going through a rebranding process or vice versa. Maybe you had a group practice and you decided that it was too much to manage and it's not really what you thought it was all um, made out to be and and you want to go back to a solo practice. So there's a lot of different reasons to transition and we just wanted to really talk about how to approach that and the different steps that you would need to take. And this is something that Katie actually has experienced firsthand um, recently with within, you know, the past year. And so I think it would be 
what has it been two years? She just gave, it's gave me over the, two the, years. <laughs> what? Okay. We live in a time warp apparently. So it's been over two years since she has actually closed down her practice, which is mind boggling. We, um, we think it would be really helpful for Katie to share her experience and uh, kind of what what that process looked like for her. So Katie, why don't we start there with you sharing your story with Startup Nation because they might not have heard it previously. Yeah. So interestingly enough, um, you know, I I worked in community mental health for many years and the next right step was private practice, right? Like that's what you do. But interestingly, and if you've been a loyal fan, you've probably heard me talk about this, um, is that, you know, I have been in management and leadership since I was 26 years old. And so then moving into private practice as a solo business owner, you know, I had to learn everything about business and that was a great and amazing learning experience. But during my course of being in private practice, and I, I really loved working with couples, but I really yearned to kind of be in that building a business role um, and more in the leadership role. I was really missing that. Um, I loved my clients. I, I loved working with couples, but I've realized that my talents are best served from one to many rather than one to one. So it was probably like four years that I was kind of thinking about, well, what do I, what do I do next? You know, and during that time I was building this business with Kate and we've really, you know, built a private practice startup to something that's very cool. That's a business overall that kind of runs itself, um, which is really awesome. And that's exciting for me. And so in private practice, I, was dealing with a lot of like therapist shame. Like, you know, you go to school for so many years and, you know, you know, what other therapists think about you? What is our audience about audience from the private practice think about me if I leave therapy? Um, but you know, one of the things I really never talked about is I've actually suffered with chronic back problems since I was 19 years old. So sitting in a chair for four or five, six hours on end was pretty excruciating. And especially when I had some chronic spells, it was pretty bad. What was interesting is when we went into full on pandemic and we were on zoom, like nine, Nine hours a day, 10 hours a day. I remember like doing a, a quick video with my chiropractor on how to manage, you know, like headaches and jaw pain and neck pain that therapists were experiencing. Um, I actually discovered I had more issues in my spine and specifically in my neck. And I ended up being in like chronic pain every day for six months. And um, the only time I was in pain when I was when I was laying down, it was just like awful. And it was really the thing that finally pushed me out and said, I just can't do this anymore. I can't you know, live, I can't live this way. Um, and I had it was, been, it was really the straw that broke the therapist back. <laughs> my neck. <laughs> <laughs> you it know, was. that little saying, but it was, yeah. it was, it was just, you know, I, to me, it was like the universe saying, well, Katie, you've been saying you, you know, wanted to do something different for a while. Here you go. Since you won't do it for yourself, I'll do it for you. <laughs> um, so that's what happened. And it was just, it was, it was a tough time because I was in excruciating pain um, constantly. But anyway, so that was the straw that broke the therapist's neck um, <laughs> and pushed me out of, you know, therapy. And the interesting thing is I had been investing in real estate since 2015, not something that I had talked about. It was just kind of like on the side, going to conferences, um, learning about investing in real estate, investing in real estate. And so I decided because I do love building businesses to enter um, our real estate business, my partner, and I really on the back end and really building the systems and the marketing and all the stuff that I love. So in that, I had to you know make a decision and make a transition and decide to close my practice. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about, the nitty gritty of that. But before we do that, let's just take a quick moment for our sponsor. As a therapist, I can tell you from experience that having the right EHR is an absolute lifeline. I recommend using Therapy Notes. They make billing, scheduling, note-taking, telehealth, and e-prescribing incredibly easy. Best of all, they offer live telephone support that's available seven days a week. Look, don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Therapy Notes is the number one highest rated EHR available today with 4.9 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot and Google. Go to therapynotes.com and enter code PPS as in private practice startup and receive a special two-month trial absolutely free. And hey, if you're coming from another EHR, no worries. Therapy Notes will import your demographic data quick and easy at no cost to you so you can get started right away. Trust me, don't waste any more of your time. Go to therapynotes.com and enter code PPS for your two-month free trial. 
As a therapist, you're probably too preoccupied with your caseload to want to think about bookkeeping and taxes. Herd is a full-service accounting software platform built specifically for therapists that helps you track and improve your practice's financial health. Regardless of whether you're a seasoned clinician or you're in the first year of your practice, Herd will help you identify areas for growth and streamline best financial practices for your business. When you sign up with Herd, you'll work directly with financial specialists to track your income and expenses, file taxes online, and grow your business. You'll also receive financial insights such as profit and loss statements and personalized monthly reports. Say goodbye to poring over spreadsheets and guessing your tax deductions or quarterly payments. Focus on your clients and Herd will take care of the rest. Plans begin at $199 per month for solo practices and $299 per month for group practices. Schedule a free 15-minute consultation at joinherd.com. That's joinherd.com. So, you know, uh, when you finally decide, I think that's the first step, right? Is deciding is to create a plan and really creating a plan with your clients in mind, but also knowing what your state requires, your board and all of that good stuff. You know, and, and in the process of deciding, it is a process. It took you many years to get to the point of finally, you know, coming to that realization that this was the direction that you wanted to go in and needed to go in for your health, for your well-being, for the next phase of life, to follow your goals and and just be in alignment with what you needed at this stage of life. And when you're starting your private practice, it's good to always start with the end in mind, to think about how can you create the foundation with your business so that whether you know, you're know you looking to close it eventually, whether you're looking to sell it to another solopreneur, or if you have a group practice and a, an organization, a company wants to buy you out, How can you have the systems and foundation set up from the get-go so that it streamlines everything for you and it makes it a lot easier to think about how to close down? And when you're investing a lot in your business and you're growing this entity, the the prospect of being able to sell that, what you've poured your heart and soul into, is very attractive. So if you think about setting it up, kind of keeping the end in mind, with the you know the systems in place and streamlining things, it really can open up the possibilities for what options you might have. So Katie, when you finally made the decision to go in the direction of shutting down your practice, talk to us about some of the steps that you tackled first. You know, you want to give your clients a decent amount of time. Um, sometimes when people close their practice, it might be unexpected. You have to close down because you have to take care of a sick family member and stuff like that. But when you have a plan, I think that's helpful. I recommend, you know, at least 60 to 90 days. Sometimes people say six months. Of course, if you're on insurance panels, um, you need to contact your insurance panels and understand the contracts and all the things like that and what they require. Um, but then you really need to start having conversations with your clients from the get. Um, because you need to help them transition. You need to help them figure out, you know, are we going to work together for the rest of these 60 or 90 days and towards closing them successfully? Or are they going to need a referral? Um, so you have to think about that and who to refer them to and give them three referrals um, and just kind of checking in. But you're also going to talk with them about your relationship too. I mean, some of your clients you've had for years and what's that going to be like for them? Um, you know, it's, it is an ending of a relationship, whether you're deciding or not. And I think as a therapist, it's great to have some support. You might have your own like loss and grief of, you know, leaving your clients, dealing with your own emotions, um, but also transitioning yourself. So that's something I think is really important to think through and get consult or, you know, a trusted colleague as well. What helped you navigate that, that part of having those difficult conversations with your clients and, wanting to stay true to yourself to what you need needed to do for you and then also not wanting to disappoint them like what helped you with that process I think just having them you know and having it early on because you know we were still having sessions and we would still see each other and we have a plan and we're working towards something and there's a you know, an ending to this. It wasn't something that was sprung on them or me or something I had to do quickly. So that's really important overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
You know, other things too in the AMFT ethics, ethics. So for a major family therapist, you know, having a professional will is very important and that should just be part of what you do now for your practice. Because the reality is in the will talks about or in the ethics, it talks about in the case of moving, transitioning, um, closing a practice or death. So unfortunately that does happen. Um, and that is obviously a very quick termination because it was probably unexpected. So having a plan in place for your clients, um, state regulations, you know, do require specific things here in the state of Florida. Um, once you officially close your practice, you do have to publish um, that you are closing in a uh, publication. So here in South Florida is the Sun Sentinel and you have to run that ad, which I, you know, I, I feel like they need to catch up with the times, but yes. that's okay for two weeks. Um, and you have to pay for that. And then you have to hold on to your, um, records for two years. So knowing where you're going to store those, what you're going to do with them. Um, and then I literally put in my calendar because, you know, some files you have forever, um, shred files, right? Because here in the state of Florida, when you aren't closed in a practice, you have to keep your files for seven years. <clears throat> so. Um, and then you have to arrange for shredding if you still have paper files. Mm-hmm. And I remember I called Pro Shred and they came out and, um, they shredded all the files securely, took them away. So that was a, it was interesting because even two years later after closing a practice, it was like another like, oh, okay, this is for real again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite so the purging a, process. <laughs> yes. Yes. It was very, very interesting. You know, and Kate had, and one thing that I, I don't think we think about is, you know, if you do have a very strong online presence, you know, how do you begin to remove yourself from the web? Mm-hmm. That's a, because, yeah, that's, that's a big process because, you know, we all work really hard to develop this strong reputation in the community and then a strong presence online as well with your website, your directory profiles, your Google, um, my business account and, uh, which is now called Google. Business profile. Business profile. Yeah. yeah. I still yeah. have to train my brain <laughs> for the rebranding. GBP. GME, yes. GBP. Yeah. Uh, to take down your reviews, take down. I mean, there's just so much when you think about all that goes into the process of having that really strong online presence. You have to remember where you are on all of those directory profiles and, um, you know, all those places. So what mm-hmm. helped you with that process of removing yourself and the options for people to find you on the web? Well, I think when I decided to close and I wasn't going to take on any more clients, I, you know, put on my website permanently closed. You have to uh, put permanent closed on your Google business profile. Um, you know, if you are paying for directories or if you're on free directories, you want to remove yourself from there. Um, but the another thing, like it's two plus years later and I still get calls, whether it's client referrals or old clients or people still are finding me on the web. And the reality is, is I've done so many videos, written so many blogs. They're just kind of out there. Um, and, you know, there's definitely a disappointment when people call and I'm like, you know, I've been closed for two years. But I always the great thing is I have so many great referral partners like Kate's group practice and other colleagues um, that I do always offer a referral still today. And, you know, I just feel that's kind of my duty. And, you know, I would be frustrated if I was calling a therapist um, that I had searched on the Web or whatnot. I really wanted to work with them and not being able to work with them. So giving a good quality of referral, I think, is always very important. Yeah, for sure. It is. And um you know, on the front end, we think about those things as we're closing our practice with our active clients on the caseload of who we need to transition. And I went through that process when I was taking a leave of absence from my private practice when I went on maternity leave. And if you all want to hear more about that, we did a deep dive in a podcast episode that we did specifically preparing for maternity leave. So um, we'll add the link for that in the show notes. So it's thinking about things on your current caseload and then clients will resurface, old clients and then new clients will reach out two years later wanting to work with you because they've seen some awesome video series that you did that's just published out there that is very difficult to take down and you don't even know how to access it anymore. And so um, having a system set up and being prepared to be able to continue to be helpful to people and help them get the help that they need, even if it's not you. Um, so that is, that is an important thing to do for sure. What else are we missing, Katie? Um, I think that kind of encompasses everything overall. I definitely would, again, just check with your state board. Um, but really thinking overall of your plan, the emotional impact for you, your clients, the transitioning aspect, having that will now, um, not waiting, um, 
And then making sure that you, whether it's electronic or physical, you know, you destroy your medical files. That's, that's very important. And like Kate said, she did a podcast on her maternity leave, but we've also had the pleasure of having John Clark and Allison per year talking about moving a practice. Um, so we'll add that podcast as well as I did a podcast with Ernesto Segismundo on transitioning out of therapy. Um, and what if I don't want to be a therapist anymore? And really talking about my story much deeper there and, and all the mental and emotional stuff that I had to kind of deal with. So we'll add that in the show notes as well. And I know we talked um, a lot about closing your practice and another topic that we'd like to come back on and talk about another time is selling your practice and what that would look like to sell to another either clinician or to an organization um, who or a company to come in and, and acquire your business. So we'll come back and talk about that another time. And we hope you all found this content on today's podcast to be useful. We're always trying to think about topics in the 314 episodes that we've done so far. Um, to really meet your needs along the practice building and glowing, glowing, <laughs> glowing and growing and transitioning process. So if there's a topic that we haven't talked about that you're wanting to suggest, or maybe you want to come on the show as a guest, definitely reach out to us, let us know. And uh, we want to encourage you to subscribe, rate and review the show because that helps us to be able to reach more therapists across the globe and really helping them to build a business that's in alignment with their goals and dreams, both personally and professionally. So um, we hope you enjoyed and till the next and don't time. Forget to, yeah. Don't forget to join us next time as we bring Barbara Griswold back, um, who really is the guru on helping you you know, maximize your time writing progress notes. But today on the next episode, actually, she's going to be talking to us about how to write a 10 minute treatment plan. So don't miss that for sure. All right. Well, we'll see you next time. Startup Nation, stay inspired. Take care, everybody. Thanks for joining us on the Private Practice Startup. Visit theprivatepracticestartup.com for awesome resources, free trainings, attorney approved private practice paperwork, and so much more. 